Hello everyone, I'm Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video is one part of a series in which we're going to make a game called Boxel or Sokoban, depending on where you know it from. And we're going to make this in GameMaker Studio 2, and then we're going to take this game and port it over and create our own C++ game engine using the SFML library. So overall, I'm going to say, what problem are we trying to solve? We're trying to make the game Boxel slash Sokoban. So here is a picture of that. So we have a character who is stuck in this warehouse or whatever he's stuck in. And there are boxes that need to be pushed to specific goals. And so there are rules like you can't push two boxes in a row. He's not strong enough to do that. He can't pull on things. So if you get a box in a corner, you're pretty much done for unless that corner is supposed to be a goal. But that's pretty much the whole thought process of the game. It's a, it's a very simple concept, walking around, pushing blocks, getting them from point A to point B. So part zero of this, of this lecture series is understanding the game design, which we'll go into more detail in that explanation. And then this is part one, where we're just going to develop the main menu for the game. And then parts two and beyond are going to you know, continue, obviously, to work toward our common goal here. So this is my version of the main menu. So what are we trying to do in this video? So my game is in 720p resolution. I recommend if you're just following along, continue to do that. Keep a 720p resolution going for your game. Um, so here is a screenshot of it. What are we trying to do? We're trying to make a main menu. You see that it's working. So I have a background image. And uh, the one thing I've done basically for the first time in my life in these videos is show you how to layer them. If you know Photoshop, you know exactly what I'm going to, but if you haven't done anything like this before, it's pretty cool. We can take a take a picture and we can layer it, because there's actually three layers to this. This Boxing Day here, that's the name of my game, that's a layer. The There's actually a darkening layer to the actual picture, because the picture is a lot more bright than what you see here in this image. So we're going to put that together. That's our background image. And then we also have a parent class. So there's two actual classes going on here to make these buttons work. One is a parent class. So we're going to look at all the behavior that's common for one of these buttons that are going to be part of my main menu. So what that means is we're looking at, you know, like a mouse over, mouse leave event, and basically, you know, like, and, and, and the graphic is going to be the same, you know, maybe not the text, but the graphic is going to be the same. So then we're going to derive children classes that take that base behavior and we just change what we need to change. This is inheritance and polymorphism. This is you know advanced object-oriented programming principles here in action where we can change the text and we can change the behavior because if I click this button, this button should take me to a completely different place than clicking on quick game. So that's the end result here. That's the goal we're trying to go for right now. So here is my version again, so this is all in Game Maker. This is not a step-by-step -step kind of thing. This is I already did this in, Visual, uh, in uh, Game Maker Studio, and I'm just going to be describing the parts and showing you the code. So your goal for this step is basically just to kind of get it going. So if you're in my classes, we've already done this to death two, three, four times by now. So this is just a, you know basically just a you know a quick reminder tutorial on how to get yourself to the same level. So I can mouse over, mouse leave, mouse over, mouse leave. And if I right now I have it set up so I have a different blank room for each of these puzzle rooms. If I clicked on them, they would just take me to random places uh, that are completely empty. We'll fill that in in a, in a future part. But then the quick game obviously should quit the game. But you again, notice that the mouse over, mouse leave event, and I click and the game is over. So let's take a look. So I only needed two sprites to make this thing work. I have a main menu background sprite, and then I have one sprite, which is, if you want to think of it, it's actually two sprites, it's an animation, that's sitting there for how the button, the, how, the, how the picturing, how the animation of the button will work. So let's take a look here. Here is my image. Is there a way to make that bigger? I don't think so. Nope, that's as big as it gets. So I did, I'm trying to do a 1280 by 720 resolution, but I took an image from the internet. So I just found a picture of a warehouse, and I scaled it as best as I could to fit the 1280 by 720. It doesn't have to be exact, and so you don't have to you know, worry about weird scaling, because I can cut off a little bit of this picture, and no one's going to notice. But if you scale things incorrectly, scale it too far wide or too, too tall, 
or something like that, you're going to have some issues with that. So that's all I did was I just took an image and just made it 720p or as close to 720p as I could get. want to make sure I'm bigger than 720p but not smaller than 720p. So that's all I did on this part of it. So then in the image itself, you see here, you would see this, you would think that's one layer. But if you see this over here in the editor, the layering properties, I actually have three layers. I, don't, I didn't name them or anything because it's already kind of simple enough. So the three layers are, the, the default layer is just the image, just that plain image all by itself. So that's the 1300 or whatever by 720 image. And then on top of it, and see if I, if, I, if I make these invisible, you can see you know these other layers. And I can just show you this layer. See how the picture is much brighter than the end result is? And that's because this is just the photo of the warehouse uh, with, no, you know, with no post uh, production applied to it. So the next layering I added was just a plain old, just a dark black image just with some opacity to it. So like here you go, I made it a 50% opacity and it's just a black, black box. That's all it is. And so that means that with the opacity, it's half see-through and half not, kind of like a sunglasses, the way you know you can see through sunglasses, or the light passes through a pair of sunglasses. So with that layering, then I've darkened the image. And I and you know, if I want to make it more or less, all I have to do is go and just change the slider bar. But I'm I'm pretty content right now with the 50%. So then on top of all of that, then is the graphic layer. Because if I, you know, it's all it, all these layers are dependent on the others. Because if I put this layer underneath this layer then it's not going to be as bright as it needs to be this darkening only wants to be only needs to be done with the image itself and not with the the text the GUI that goes over it so with all of that and I just used you know basically you know the text tool to to print out you know this is other than the layering this is absolutely nothing complicated I have no art skills whatsoever so this is how everything works out to make this thing into one just one pure image. Okay, so then moving on to the second image that we need here, I need to take a look at the button sprite. So there's two images. One is the mouse on, and one is the mouse off state. So I've got that, so two images. I always use the zero state for the mouse off, and I use the one state for the mouse on. So for this image, you can see, oh, uh, sizing. Uh, because of, you know you can use whatever you want but I used 500 by 150 for the size of my sprite and that just kind of fits what I'm trying to do maybe it, you know maybe you agree maybe you don't doesn't much matter I'm just gonna keep on going with it but inside of this all I basically did was just add a little tiny outline and then I cleared out the rest of the image because I just you know if I if I make it too colorful or you're not gonna see the background as much so I just I just thought why not try it and it looks halfway decent to have just the yellow background with a, a completely clear interior. So then the other image is kind of the reverse of that. So this is a completely yellow interior. I didn't make the outside clear, I made it a gray. And you'll see that's, that'll be the text color that we'll use later. So that, that's all I used for sprites for this entire thing. I'm going to run the game again. So when it comes down to it, drag this over, you know, like that's all I'm using and then of course the text will come in here in a second or two when I'm talking about that so I used a font for the drawing of the text so I just I called it main menu button font and I just used Arial bold size 50 and you can again choose whatever it is you want to choose if, it, if you if you like that I mean it's not great looking it's not terrible looking it's meh you know but it gets the job done for first level of a polish for this but that's all I did was just set up a basic font Okay, so then just to say things, I have a basic room structure. I have, again, I, everything is in 720p. Here's my main menu. And I'll, we'll get to that, and you know, I'll just kind of come around again in a little bit here. So I'm already at nine minutes. Okay, no problem there. So boxing day, there's my image, there's my background image. There are my four object types, each of a different type. We're, again, we're going to cover that in a minute. And then I also have three completely blank rooms and just to show like just to show that they can go to different places and I and I kind of linked in my buttons correctly I just put a quick game button which we don't we don't have yet I just put them in a different place in every one of the rooms so when I run my game and I go to the menus I go oh okay this worked out in the right place it went to the correct level and uh, we'll definitely we'd fix that at a later time for sure 
but it's just just to get a skeleton outline going okay so again so the background image itself is just going into the background layer inside of main menu room and just going down to here in the background layer properties and just using that sprite that's all just I just went and I clicked it and there it is if I click none there'd be nothing be, you know that's very boring very white very in your face oops I don't want that but I want the sprite again so this brings everything back okay so that is it the, because the background doesn't have anything to do with the game itself it's just there's a background image doesn't have to be an object there's no interactivity with it at least at the simple level and uh, we're ready to move on to the button class itself so let say we're dealing dealing with inheritance and polymorphism here so I was like what is common to every button and what is what is a behavior that is custom to the different button classes so say what is cut what is common to every button class is that there's a mouse over and a mouse leave there is a different graphic that shows in each of those two cases and uh, let's see what else is there you know let's just take a look at the code here so for every button class there is a create event and so there's text that I, I named a variable called text you'll see that in a little bit I, I called it oops just basically if you see an oops you didn't do the, the deriving you didn't do the parenting correctly when when you go to run this thing later on so text is equal to oops and my image speed is equal to zero because the image that I'm using that I will be using this button sprite if I do not set the image speed to zero it'll flicker and you'll never get the result that you're looking for but for what I'm doing here in this if with this base class these are the only two things I need to account for everything else that game maker does it pretty much does for free so we're, we're happy there so the image speed is equal to zero and the image index will be set to zero because that's the default so mouse enter event when the mouse enters the bounding box of the sprite of this button class I want to flip the image index to the on sprite and when the mouse finally decides to leave I want to put it back so the image will always be in the correct number it'll either be the zero or the one depending on where that mouse is at any given time pretty common stuff so when it comes to the left press at least for the base class since this is game maker and this isn't you know Java or C++ or anything like that I would make this an abstract class and make this a pure virtual function if I could but this left pressed just to give it a behavior so if anyone comes back later and goes what is this thing supposed to do well the base behavior is to do nothing like do nothing at all even if you click on it and then leave a note for there you know you can override this in any of the drive classes because every button should do a different thing level one goes to level one level two goes to level two quit game goes to quit game or you name it this button does whatever it's supposed to do okay so the final step here is what should I do when I draw this is this is just a little more complicated than you might have expected but this is just to kind of make everything nice and modular nice and flexible so the first thing because the image index is already set I just I just draw self and then from there I, I'm setting up the text color so they say it will draw the correct image because I want to make sure I draw the text on top of the button that I've just that I've just drawn to the screen so I center I'm gonna because I want to center my text in the center of the sprite so I tell it let's horizontally align the printing and let's vertically align the printing both centered and then also set the font to the one that I chose earlier and you're like okay so then the, the final step here is which color do I want to draw and the, the color that I want to draw is dependent on the image index if it's a zero I want to draw yellow you know, so yellow on completely clear and if it is image index is one it'll draw gray on top of the yellow that is drawn so we you know we've already seen that a few times but just kind of just take another look at that and just see here you know, just go okay it draws yellow with the, or it draws gray and so and then where does it draw the thing basically I want it to draw halfway and halfway because I want the center point to be right in the middle of my sprite so I can use X plus one half of sprite width and Y plus one half of sprite white as my coordinates and then that'll give me everything I want to do so it's and with the point here centered everything will always look perfect and everything will always look centered with the correct color being drawn and the correct sprite being drawn underneath it so that's 
definitely next. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it when it comes to the base behavior of a button. So every button, as long as you derive from this correctly, and you know, I can see here my parenting here, I can see I have four children. I'm a parent because you know because I have four children. I have the quit game button in each of the three button classes, the derived classes that we haven't described yet. So those are my children, so they get this behavior for free, and all I have to do is change the behavior I need to make it a little more custom, and just change. You know, this just comes from experience, just doing this over and over and over again, and just learning the procedure. Just going, well, what can I leave alone, and what do I need to modify? And so this is pretty simple. Once you've done it once or twice, you can see how this just kind of continues on. So the quit game button derives its parent is the main menu button class and what's cool about GameMaker they added this in you can actually see like what you get for free from the parent class that's grayed out but you can also see what you've overridden and I've overridden the create function and the left pressed button uh, function because that that all the other behavior is I want to be left alone but the only thing I need to do here in the create event is say call my parent so basically call the parent create event which, you know, I, is it easy to go in there? Show parent event. So that basically set the text and set the image speed because I want to do that. I still want to make sure that the image speed is set to zero. But then after this is all said and done, I go, well, I have custom text I want to draw and I want it to say quit game because that's the quit game button. But otherwise, everything else should stay the same. And the only difference, you know, when it comes to mouse over, mouse leave and all that, but now I've overridden the left press event. What do I want to do when I press it? Quit the game. So it's taking over, it's saying, you know, Game Maker is saying, hey, this object knows better than its parent what it should do when I click on it. So now, instead of doing nothing when I click on the end game button, I click it and game end. And so basically for every one of the button classes, I'm doing the exact same thought process here. I'm just changing the text that gets drawn, and I'm changing the behavior of what happens when I click it. So looking at level one. My create event, I call the parent to do all the work that's already been done for us in the parent, but now I just change the text element to puzzle one, because that's what I want the text to be drawn from the button. And when I press the button, I want to go to the level one room. And as you can imagine, it's the same thing over and over and over again for each of the individual buttons. If I press the left button for level two, I better go to level two. And when I create this, the text better say puzzle two. And for level three, when I say room go to level three room, when I left press the thing, and when I create the thing, I better show the text for puzzle three. So at this point, you just got to make sure in the room you drag the correct objects to the correct placings. And I can see that. Let's see. Whoops. I'm in the instance layer now. I can see over here I have four objects. I've got a quick game and three of the buttons, one for each type all placed in the room exactly how I want it, or at least how I want it for now. And so one last time, or three last times, or whatever, four last times, we could try this out and go, here I go. I can mouse over, do all the things I want to do. This takes me to level one, and this quits the game. And so the, you know, and again, I just have the, I just have the, uh, the quick game buttons in different places, just so I know I'm going to a different, otherwise empty room. And so puzzle three brings me down here, quick game. And one last time, we've already done it, but just to do it one last time, quick game, then quits the game. So for part one of this, getting a menu, just a basic main menu going, we're pretty much there. So now, you know, moving on, what would be the next step? The next step would definitely be toward making gameplay, the actual game working. So hope to see you in that next video. Thanks for following along, and uh, see you next time.